Hey everybody, welcome back. In the last tutorial, we were looking at how we could set up our environment for our Hello World. And we left off with having a button that we have here. And every time we would click this button, it would print to the screen that this button was pressed. Now, in this tutorial, we will be picking up where we left off, and we're going to keep going with our Hello World. And remember, in our original Hello World, we wanted to have it where every time we click the button, a new piece of text would pop up here, and a new image would come. In this tutorial, we're going to be focusing more on how we change this text. And, and I'll dive a little bit into text, uh, but, but not too deep. So let's get started. First thing we want to do is we want to open up, if, if your script's not already open, the button logic script that we made in the last tutorial, we're going to double click that. Now, if it's already open, then you'll just have to go down and click the mono diff here. And this will open up your script. Make this a little bigger. <clears throat> and I can also uh, scroll in a bit. So maybe you guys need that if it's not big enough for your screen. Okay. So that should be plenty big for you guys. Um, so again, uh, going just to give a little quick recap, when you create a new script in Unity, uh, it will give you the class that you've named it. It's going to give you the start function, which is used for initialization. And it's going to give you the update function, which is called roughly 60 times a second. So anything you write in here will get called around 60 times a second every time a frame's called. And this button press here, is something that we made in the last tutorial that we linked up with our button. Again, if you need a recap on that, go back and visit the previous tutorial. Um, so let, let's keep going. So remember, every time we hit that button, it's going to call this function right here. So when, we, when it calls that function, we want it to replace the text. So for, for the sake of time, let's just say that we want to have three different strings of text that it can choose, and it's going to rotate through uh, that text. Okay, so first thing we need to do is we need to have a reference to the text in the editor that we want to change. So one of the, there's many ways to do this, uh, but the, one way I'm going to do it is I'm going to create a public variable. Sorry, public, and we're gonna I'm going to create a public uh, text. Whoops. So this is a text object. Now, if you look, I put in text, but it's not giving me an option for text. This goes back to our using statements that we had. And in the last tutorial, I talked about the using statements that are up at the top here. And so we need to, we need to make a reference to the code that Unity gives us for UI elements. So to do that, we're going to skip down. We're going to, hey, using Unity engine, I believe it's engine, dot UI. There we go. So now, don't forget your semicolon. So now when I go down and I type public text, see, it gives me all these text features because these text features are all part of the UI um, code structure that they've given us. So we just have to make sure that we're using this using statement. This is very important for when we're doing any kind of app development or user interface development in Unity. You, you're definitely gonna need this using statement, okay? in addition to the ones that it automatically gives you. So again, we're going to say public text semicolon. Okay, so now what happens is we will have a, um, hang on. Oh, we have to do this. No. Oh, we have to give it a name. So, so stop back. <clears throat> so, uh, remember, first thing you want to do is you say public. So we'll say public text, and and every time and this is, this is a variable. We're having a public text. But we always have to give it a name. So for this one, I'm going to call it uh, my text. Again, you can call this name can be called anything you want it to be called. Just that's what we're going to reference this later. 
Okay, so that's the first thing we're gonna do. Now let's save this. Save all. Let's let's jump back to uh, let's jump back to Unity. Pull this over here, and I just want to put this keep it in the doc. Okay. So it looks like it compiled, and we can we can look at our uh, code here. We attached it to the canvas, if you remember in the last tutorial. And but now we made this public variable. Remember we wrote this in the script. So now it says my text because that's what we called it in the script. But it doesn't have a text associated with it. So next thing we need to do, now that we've written that in there, we're going to grab the text, which is right here. See if I click it here, it also picks it here. So I'm going to grab it here and I'm going to drag it all. Oh, well, first we have to pick canvas. So we have that here. And now we're going to grab... <clears throat> We're gonna. Uh oh. Let me. I'm gonna command Z a couple of times because I want the text to be under the canvas. So we're gonna. Again, we're gonna hit the canvas. We're gonna grab this text and we're gonna drag it and put it right here into that variable that we did. See what I did there? So recap what I just did. I created a public text object called my text. Okay. Then I saved it. Then I went back into Unity. I made sure it compiled without any errors. You can look in the console, we can clear it. There's no errors. And we can see that if I click on Canvas here, that's where I put my button logic script. And then I grab this text and I drug it and put it right here. And let's see something else I can do. I can click here in this field. And see how it highlights where it is over here? It highlights the text. I'll show you that again. I hit the text and look over here on the far left. It made a uh, yellow text and we made sure it was that. Okay, so cool. Now we have a reference to that in our script, which is fantastic. Now we can start changing the um, the string that's associated with it or the letters if, if, if uh, you're not sure what a string is. Strings are pretty much any kind of characters that we have on screen. In, in a nutshell, that's what a string is for the for this purpose. Okay, so let's go back to our scripts. So, okay, cool. Now we have a reference to this. So now we need to change the text that's in it. So in order to do this, and we want the text the text to change every time this this button is hit. So um, you know, a, a quick way that we can make sure that this uh, changes. Uh, we can say <clears throat> we can say that my text equals an equal uh, and I'll, I'll explain what this line means in a minute equals we're gonna do quotation we're gonna say um, um, hmm. let me think about this for a second. So one way that we can make sure that it changes and it, and it changes every three times, let me let me do this a number another way. So I'm going to create a private integer. So we said private int my int, and then in the start function, I'm going to say my int. Is it my int? I really wanted to have that capitalized. Bear with me. So we're going to say my int equals we're going to say equals one okay so what this does is this create we we created an integer i made it private just because i don't want it public to uh the rest of the program i just want it private for this particular cs class don't worry about this so much right now um but we can talk about that later but just 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 trust me and, and use this way so private int my int and then in my start function, we initialize, I set my int equal to zero. What this means is this space that I've created in memory for an integer, and I've set it to one. So right now, if I looked in the, in the value of my int, it would be one. Okay. So uh, the next thing I want to do is every time I hit this button, press button, I want to print this integer, but I'm also going to add one to it. Okay. Let me show you. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to say my text. And we hit at the top there. 
my text equals equals um, we're gonna say my number is space plus my int okay so this is how we do strings uh, this string is gonna what, what, what is gonna do is gonna say well we need to give my text dot text that's important for UI elements so we're gonna say my text dot text equals and here's the string anytime you do a hard code a string it needs to be in parentheses okay and I put a space here because I also want it to print the number so I want it to print my number is one so it's gonna hey my number is and then we're do the plus symbol to know that we want to we, we want to put these pieces of string together and it will automatically turn my int into a string uh, something else we could do we could say well, let's see if this works and I'll show you another way I like to do it as well and then after this we want to add one more to integer so we're gonna say my int just like you would do with math my int equals there's two ways to do this we can say my my int equals my int plus one and I'll show you a couple of different ways we can do this so every time it goes through this it's gonna change it's gonna change that that integer okay so we'll know that it changes every time and we know we're hitting this so we as earlier said earlier we wanted to just do three three numbers and I'll show you how we can go through three numbers and only three numbers but for now I'm going to show you how this works so we're going to hit file save all we're going to go back make sure that it's going to compile we'll look at our console we don't have any errors that's good so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to hit play 